Will y'all please help me welcome Alex von Bitter reading from his book, Wiggins Learns His Manners. Alex von Bitter. Good evening. I'm, I'm honored to be here. And uh, I want you to know that I'm not like uh, Christine's character who likes cold showers. And I did take one for you tonight. <laughs> So I would imagine also, unlike Christine and Frank's book, this book has a lot fewer words. <laughs> uh, it is my first attempt at a children's book together with uh, my co-author, Leslie Quirk. Leslie is a illustrator and a children's book author who has 14 books to her name uh, that all sold very well, and she still hasn't made a dime. Um, for me, this was a labor of love. Uh, Leslie found out that I was asked to teach manners classes at NYU and at some law firms. And so she, was, <laughs> so she believed that I could help her write a manners book for children. So I am not going to read the whole book, which would probably take eight minutes. <laughs> I will give you some ideas what this is like. It is written for first readers, so it is perfect for you who have children uh, that are just going to school. And uh, as I was telling uh, Frank and Christine before, I had a four-year-old in uh, Florida last week who memorized every word of it. <laughs> so it's never too soon for children to learn manners and teach their parents while they're reading the book. <laughs> The story is about Wiggins. Wiggins is a chocolate lab. He's a chocolate lab because he's the only dog breed that has food in it. And uh, he goes, uh, he's a very uh, rascally dog. He doesn't have uh, good manners. And so it starts as um, that Wiggins is a chocolate Labrador puppy and was totally rascal. He was a total rascal when it came to manners. His parents had tried to teach him how to behave, but Wiggins just couldn't seem to mind his manners. Then there's a whole table of evidence of bad manners <laughs> that most of children relate to. And we usually uh, try to have them enact that, and they're volunteers. <laughs> So yapping when you do not get what you want. Uh, obviously, none of these things happen in restaurants. Uh, chewing slippers, putting too much inside your mouth at one time, relieving yourself at the wrong time, rolling in something stinky. <laughs> So Wiggins' parents were almost ready to give up when they decided to seek help from the Chihuahua, the oldest and wisest dog in Manhattan. Surely he would have suggestions on how to improve Wiggins' manners. The Chihuahua listened while Wiggins' parents told him about their son's behavior. So this is the picture of the Chihuahua. It may come as no, it may come as no surprise to you that I am a supporter of Tibet House. <laughs> so the Chihuahua suggested that Wiggins' parents take their son to a very special and elegant place. He handed him a card. This is the place where puppies can learn all things they need to know about refinement and good manners. And the card says, the Four Seasons, St. Bernard, top dog. <laughs> so anyway, Wiggins comes to the restaurant. And really, his hidden thing was that he thought that he heard that uh, um, the, one of the specialties of the Four Seasons is roast duck. But he just heard the word duck. And as a Labrador, he was imagining that he could chase some ducks in the pool. It did not go that way. So uh, throughout the book, there are 10 lessons. They're pretty basic. They're for children. Uh, what to do when you meet somebody first time. Uh, 
how you can calm down and cure your impatience just a little bit um, by pretending life is a, a movie and uh, just watch what happens next. Uh, finally, they come into our pool room, which is our main dining room, and there are a couple of grumpy old uh, investment bankers. And one of them says, <clears throat> This place is going to the dogs. <laughs> so this was my original favorite title for the book, uh, that manners are going to the dogs. But the publisher didn't think they could sell books that way. Another patron across the pool says, how long, it, how long does a bone take? Don't they know who I am? <laughs> So lesson number four is when you don't know what to do, look at what others are doing and don't be afraid to ask for help. I think children have an easier time with that than adults. Um, one of my favorite drawings that Leslie really labored over was um, the display of weird foods. <laughs> I find it very, very useful to take children into the kitchen during the meal, to entertain them in the kitchen, and to give them something to taste that they consider really weird and yucky. But if they approach it with adventure and a sense of discovery, I found that they will all take a bite. But whether they spit it out or not doesn't matter to me. And then they can go out and brag to their parents and their family that they tasted something really weird. So the weird foods are caviar and oysters and sea urchin, crab legs, escargot, truffles, frog legs, and okra. <laughs> not weird to Maybe me, not, but not go. weird to the southern <laughs> So it's about being respectful of others' tastes and uh, always be willing to take a bite of something new. Well, Wiggins is also going into the kitchen and he grabs a duck, he gets caught, he gets to apologize, he gets to make amends by cleaning up, and uh, Finally, they get cotton candy, which we're also famous for, uh, in that we are not taking ourselves so seriously. And it gives an opportunity, gives him an opportunity to, to share it with the other puppies in class. Final lesson is when somebody has done something nice for you, say thank you and show them you appreciate it. All very basic, and um, I think it's a fun book. It has lots of uh, side jokes. Uh, they may be a little uh, corny, but the kids get a kick out of it. So I hope you'll look at it downstairs and give it to your favorite child. So I take questions and reservations. <laughs> Eight and a half, except for bar mitzvahs. <laughs> we do. Actually, um, one of one of the um, genesis for this book was that I have a children's day. It's the third Friday in August when children eat for free. Lunch and dinner. Uh, the accompanying adults have to pay. Uh, the idea is that we like firsts. We think firsts are very important, and first fine dining important. Uh, fine dining experience is very important to a child. We'd love it to be with us, and we have a blast. The whole place is full of children, and it's really fun. So this was a giveaway for that third one. Or whatever. Now, I said children, the, uh, the, the adults uh, sometimes don't have necessarily bad manners, but just a real uh, lack of consideration for others, and, which, is, which is matters on a totally different level. Yes. Still, I would say eight and a half, and then there are some people that show a, a one or a two. <laughs> Same question. Same question. All right. Well, no, are you, are you, were you going to uh, write a book on the manners for adults? 
Uh, no, I don't think so. It's, it's fun to teach the classes to, um, to lawyers or, or business uh, consultants. Uh, there seems to be no short supply of very intelligent people that work at these firms, but many can't close a deal because they don't have the first uh, uh, clue about manners and how to behave in a social situation where, where they mix and mingle and at the same time have to sell. So there is a market, there's a definite market for that. What exactly do you uh, really, A to C, the etiquette of uh, taking out a client or being a guest of a client at a restaurant, uh, how to plan parties, um, what the appropriate considerations are for that, what is good manners, what is bad manners. Um, maybe you read the New York Times a couple of days ago about RSVPs. Yes. And uh, that's one of the really uh, devastatingly difficult things uh, for a company to plan a large event. And they have 50% RSVPs, and they scale down, and then the people that didn't say anything show up anyway. So it's that kind of thing that really is important to know from both sides. What are your responsibilities as a host and um, as a guest? Yes, please. So you've integrated social behavior and manners and corporate, which is unusual. I've never heard anyone do both. Yeah, I don't think you can separate. Really? I don't think so. It all, it all is a social skill. It's a skill that is essential to do business. And the, the larger it gets, the more important it gets, in my opinion. Uh, I think I've taught four classes over the last three years. That's it. Do you find that you mentioned lawyers and investment practice? Mm -hmm. is, is, there, is there a reason why you find out these two professions? Or, or, or Only because I've, asked, I've been asked by them. I didn't seek this out. <laughs> So they just asked me to, to address their uh, summer associates or their first year associates or to have dinner with them. That's my favorite part, having dinner. <laughs> Working through it. Are there any groups of people or professions that you've identified in, in sort of general way have very good matters or very bad matters? <laughs> I, th I think generally bankers have very good manners. Uh, I think Hollywood has a sense of entitlement and I don't care. Uh, the one exception being David Geffen who keeps a jacket in his New York office just to come to us. That's respectful, I believe. Uh, that's what comes to mind. Did you have fun writing the books because there's so many humorous things about it or was it hard to write? Um, Leslie and I spent one hour at Rancho La Puerta writing the book. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was the easy part. It took Leslie about a year to illustrate it, and then it took the publisher another two years to um, put it on paper. And they, I got very impatient with the editing. So, it was harder on them than me. <laughs> yes, there's one in the works for the San Diego Zoo on animal conservation and animal behavior. So Wiggins is going to the San Diego Zoo. Okay, one more. Uh, besides chutney masala, where do you like to eat? <laughs> Any place where it's free. <laughs> no, that's not fair. Um, I, I love to eat every, any place where um, there is a friendly welcome and a sincere attempt at cooking good food and creating an atmosphere that is fun for everyone. So I'm in love with this, this place or with this place. So I'd like to leave you with one thing. I, I was thinking, what are manners, uh, why are manners important to me? And what I came up with is we need manners to create moments that allow us to connect and support each other and to experience life at our human speed, the speed our bodies and minds are built for.
so I'm very happy not to see black bears and cell phones. <laughs>